It is really cold. I'm not feeling it. Well, I mean, I am feeling it. I don't like feeling it is really what I mean to say. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just took our friends, Nathan and Jill, to the airport with their girls. Uh, June fell asleep in the back seat, and when they were going to get out, they were getting everything out, and Jill looks around, she goes, oh, June. <laughs> I said, oh my gosh, what would you do <laughs> if you forgot her? <laughs> oh man, that would be really bad. Obviously, that wouldn't happen, but <laughs> it was funny. Jude's a handful. She is a sweet, sweet baby, but she is a handful toddler. She's just like the sort that's into everything and just so stinking extra cute. So we enjoyed our visit with them. It was very nice. Mm -hmm. It was cold. It was very cold. And, and gross. We spent a lot of time inside and cooked a lot. So I am walking you guys out here to the barn right now. We're going to do a quick update. Uh, because we had guests here today, we actually didn't do a whole lot of farm stuff. Some farm stuff did get done nonetheless. We're going to come out here and look at it. It's weird to me how it can look so like exceptionally beautiful here. Green still still pretty green in the grass blue sky warm sunshine but barely be over freezing that's exactly what we're doing yeah <laughs> all right so you guys know sweet Maya's brother Noah who we call him our bonus child um, he moved in with us when he was a teenager and he is Jeremiah's youngest brother but um, camera's were, leaning you're gonna have a picture of me on there where I'm flinching. Because <laughs> I see it moving. I guess I should probably find a better place for it than right here. You good? Nope, I'm, still leaning. No, I'm just gonna hold on to it. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, Hopefully this makes it into the video. But we call Noah. <laughs> I edit these videos, you know. I can work. I can. T I know. I know, a, saying, I like, know a girl. <laughs> I can get it in. I can get it in. Movie? Come over here so I can hold this on this side. Okay. So we. Um, <laughs> let me write it back in. So uh, Noah is Jeremiah's youngest brother, and like a son to us. Um, and he and his wife Maddie moved out here with us, and he works for us. So he did not prior. But when we moved, obviously we weren't gonna have Ben turn anymore. And we had reached a place where we could employ Noah, which made it possible for him to move out here with us, which was a huge blessing. Y'all, Gabriel carries his bowl around a like a security blanket. Not just that, he plays a game with us. He's, he hides it in a different spot every single time. It was uh, Tuesday this week. I think it took me about 45 minutes to locate it. It was kind of fun. We have a lot of things that we're wanting to get done and we have our plan, our, our, our big plan and things that we want to do in our community and different endeavors that we are embarking on. Uh, some of which is already like the ball is rolling behind the scenes and you guys will know more about it later. But in doing that, we've actually hired someone else. Also coincidentally named Noah. <laughs> we met him here and have become friends with him over the last several months since we got here and uh, worked it out. We, we were really going to need him later but we ended up bringing him in a little earlier because we have so much going on and we just need an extra set of hands. That's true. So are we ready to debut Noah? De debut the Noah's and they're actually out here working in the barn today while we were preoccupied. <laughs> All right, here are the Noah's. Y'all say hello. Nice hello. work, Noah's. Oh. So y'all are team Noah's, what <laughs> Noah Sowards just said. So they've been working out here in the barn today. It is significantly warmer in here. Way better. It is way warmer. The wind is cutting out there. Yeah. yeah. So what are you guys really? doing here? Uh, we are framing up some stalls for the animals to be able to get warm yep. and have babies and whatnot. What was the deal with like lifting or something? That's gonna be on these two. Oh, okay. So we're gonna basically run a metal channel, like L, L channel, is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. I'm not a metal worker, I'm like making yeah, this stuff right. up angle as I go. Iron. Angle iron, there you go. We're on two pieces of angle iron set to the width of a two by material and we'll build the wall and then we're gonna run a system where we'll run a beam or boards across here at level that we'll be able to crank and raise this wall up and then put pins into the 
channel that'll hold the weight of the wall so it's not you can't fall so it won't be like a guillotine in any case no. you know <laughs> Listen, I come up, I innovate great ideas, and then I tell Jessica, and this happens every single time, the immediate response, if, and that's okay, that's why I tell her early enough to process it, but the first response is worst case scenario. So I'm like, hey, I figured out a way that we can make a, because of the weight of the wall, to be able to move it is going to be, to be, just to get it out was going to be a lot, so we were like, well, how can we just move it up and down in place? Came up with this, first response out of Jessica, like, scary face, like, <laughs> It's gonna chop them in half. <laughs> and I'm like, true. Hey, it's true. But sometimes it is beneficial. So, so you can innovate around where I see that things could potentially go wrong. That's true. And then you could go ahead and make sure that it's not like a guillotine that chops the cows in half. Right. And see the pins. You didn't mention those the first time. <laughs> no, because I didn't get around to it because your face looked like don't chop my cow in half. <laughs> So there will be two stalls with the movable with the partition. Movable partition to make two big stalls. If so we if need. we need to, we can have a double stall for like a it's calf. It's going to be like, the bottom of it's going to be like. Right, right so here. the wall here will yeah. actually be able to be moved up and pinned. And pinned in place. Pinned in place, out of the way. So I think it's a great idea. So putting the pins in, it might be able to go that high. We can't go above our ability to reach yeah. to put the pin in. Yes, that's true. So. But I'll say that's like eight feet tall, like yeah. as far as I can reach. So that's awesome. So right now, the reason why Noah's plural are working on the stalls. Square. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at math, but I don't think there are enough of you to be squared. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know. Somebody who's some math smart. Like, this, like this. <laughs> this is top priority, though, because Helen is due this coming weekend. And with the winter weather advisory. With the winter weather advisory. With lo the lows are going to be like... I mean, it's like 20 or something. It's pretty cold for here. Yeah, for here. A lot of people ask, like, can you just, I mean, can't cows calve in the field? Yes, they can, but, like, they can also calve in the barn, and this will be warmer. Yeah, I can come out and, like, check on her, and it'll be enclosed. It'll be more comfortable for me, too. So, I guess here, these are going to be where the gates are. These are six-foot gates, which they should be in Wednesday. Wire field? Yeah, just like our other gates. Black, wire field, rounded corners. And here? Set, cut off cattle panels. Now we'll do cattle panels on these, and then we're doing a different panel on these over here. So, you know, this is inset, you know, saying it's got the cap underneath it, but this one's flush. Yeah. And it's going to be flush facing the inside this way. Mm -hmm. And then these panels will be the two wide, four inch tall, because yeah. this is where we'll brood chicks. Okay, cool. So it'll be easier to keep them into this. And we're doing one here and one across. Right. And those will be like our brooding stalls, which they could be used for something else. But right. I'm particularly designing two stalls for brooding purposes. That's awesome. So down here is where these walls will be. These are the outside forms for the concrete so we can make sure that the ground's level. Right. <clears throat> I've had some people ask about the spaces underneath. We're gonna fill it in. We'll fill it in. Well, I've got all this dirt here from right. the holes for the beams. Right. We'll push that against the outside and then on the outside of the barn, I've got two piles of dirt just outside these doors. We're gonna use the skid stair and basically drop it around the outside to grade okay. it away from the barn and fill up that hole. That's smart. We may have already said this too. Good night. Look at that. Glorious Look. light. <laughs> Turn over here. The glorious barn is shining on me. Uh, over here where we changed this, we had talked about doing wire filled gates here and just having gates, which would be a benefit in the summer. But we actually, with this cold weather, decided to change plans to do sliding barn doors on those uh, down on the end in the milking the milk the dairy room and the outdoor milking parlor that'll be a dutch door but these are going to be sliding barn doors so that when it is cold like this we can close it off um because we can always open them all the way up in the summer when we need the airflow one other innovation that is why i decided to go ahead and do the sliding barn doors which will cut off the wind and keep it warm in here in the winter is because on the ends we're going to build in kind of like a pocket gate so we're gonna build something in right here 
inside of this essentially will be framed out when we frame in this room but essentially we're going to figure out how and i haven't figured out how exactly to do it but i know we can we're basically going to have a gate that can slide out and latch here it's like a wire filled gate so, so we can open the barn doors and but still keep an animal out if we want to so they can ventilate oh does that make sense because right yeah. now to keep animals out we have to close these but if we want to open it for ventilation we need something to keep them out you can't do a swing gate because then you're interfering with the doors of the feed room or the door of the milk room. Mm -hmm. And so we thought, well, if it could slide in and out, so we're going to build in essentially a pocket to pull hmm. the gate out and slide it and close. So we're going to do one on each end. Fancy. Yeah, I just don't got to figure out how to do it. <laughs> what are your thoughts, Noah? Not a whole lot of thoughts at the moment. Have you and Noah been having a good day? Yeah, we've gotten, we've gotten a lot done. Had a good time. That's good. Had good breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Nathan cooked us all breakfast this morning, so we had a really enjoyable start of our day. It's been a really good day. Hey, girls. I'm gonna walk out here and say hi. I wanna go look at Helen. She's been like changing. She didn't look different, she didn't look different to you. Hey, girls. Winona is such a loner. You know what? She's looking pretty pregnant though. Hey, Mags. Hey, Magdalene. Golly, look at me, look at me, uh, mayhem. Oh, yeah. They're all looking. That's a wide load right there. Large, large. <laughs> Bless her little heart. <laughs> she was like, stop. Yeah, she's like super wide. Well, I had intended or hoped to work on soil a little bit this week. I don't know. I'm excited, but I'm also very cold natured. Definitely, definitely a frost tender flower. Hey. Use that hoodie right now. Yeah. <laughs> my, fl my frost tender flower hoodie. I gotta wait for mine, just like y'all do. Just keep telling myself whenever I'm really cold and I'm wanting to do a lot of stuff outside that I'll be sweating my tail off out here in no time. <laughs> right, Maya? Maya spent more time out here because he worked out here all last summer getting it ready. But I don't know, we moved out here that week in July that was like the hottest week. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying. But like, I wasn't gardening. You weren't like, gardening. I wasn't that's working. What that's yet. what I'm saying. Like you, it was hot, but like you weren't obligated because if you didn't go out there and do the thing, like it was gonna die. Like <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna get it. Hey cows. Hello Hope. Hey beauty queen. All right. Hey Helen. Hey pretty girl. She's probably so tired of me getting up behind her and looking at her backside. They look so fluffy. I feel like they've gotten a lot fluffier this week with it getting colder. Hey. You fluffy girl. Well, she pretty much looks the same. You were right. Really like to get that stall finished. Like bedded up with some straw. It's okay to take some more time. I see a boy running towards us. One tiny farm boy. Hey. That's a lot of running. That's a lot of running. What are you doing? Just going on a farm walk with us? Oh, nice. Ben, are you excited for a baby calf to be born on our farm? Wait, it's happening? No, not right now. In a little while, though. Yeah. Within, well, they, sh they can go up to like two weeks overdue, overdue but within the next few soon. weeks, yeah. yeah. Nice. What did he say? He asked if there was any wooden fence that he could climb over to go to the cook shed. Oh, yeah. There's also, you know, a gate. <laughs> Yeah, but they don't use gates. I'm glad that they're using the wood fence for what it's for. Yeah. I climb over them too. I mean, so do I, but I mean, that's why I did that. Yeah. That's how it started. I was like, I'm tired of my kids climbing over the gates and breaking the gates and having to fix that. So I literally put all this wood in and then I just ended up really liking how it looked. Yeah. Well, I had some ideas about uh, taking you guys up and talking about some garden stuff, but the sun is officially down behind the trees and this is not this is not for me guys <laughs> i'm gonna go inside where it's more i'm inside <sighs> i sat here for the last 10 minutes and just like warmed up and put the kettle on because i need something warm in a mug to drink for fortitude but i am going to do 
a big old pot of elderberry syrup. So I did a video a long time ago that I will link below that shows how I do elderberry. Um, I, I typically make elderberry from dried berries. So this is my big jar of elderberries. I have a lot of them. Um, one of the things that I do is we have a wish list that is in the description of our videos and a lot of times people are like hey I just want to send you something I've learned a lot and we really appreciate that a lot of times though there's not anything I mean a wish list is stuff that you want that you wouldn't necessarily buy for yourself and that's what I put on there but like in the case of these I always put dried elderberries on my wish list and that way people can send them to me and one of the things I do when people I know get sick is I'm, I just make a lot of elderberry and I take it and I give it away to people um, and so it's kind of one of those things where I get to allow just the massive amount of blessing that we get to kind of flow over and bless other people as well because buying elderberry is expensive and that just gives me the ability to share the abundance of our blessings. So yes, this is a massive jar of elderberries and uh, today I'm gonna do like a quadruple batch or something because obviously a lot of people are dealing with sickness right now and this is something sweet that I can just drop off on their porch to help them through it. So I will I will link that step by step. I'm not gonna explain exactly what I'm doing here because uh, if you want like an actual step by step in measurements, you guys can get that off that video. smells so good y'all I feel like this this last couple days you know I've been making all this content for gardening stuff talking about seeds and just getting generally excited about the coming season had my friend Jill here of course that makes me excited because she's my gardening friend and so we talk a ton about gardening and just got generally excited about the coming season and then we get this like winter weather of course th this winter storm missed us we didn't we didn't get the brunt of it but afterwards the temperatures really dropped and the next storm cell that's coming through we might actually end up getting some of that winter weather and it's like, yet again, the reminder that you cannot rush the seasons. No matter how much I would really like for it to be garden time, it's not yet. So I guess until it warms up and it's actually time to start the seeds and get our hands in the soil, we'll just stay warm and dream about it together. I am getting back into the groove of making regular content because I do know that before too long, uh, we will be in the throes of summer and I will be sharing my lovely lush garden with you. I bless you. Until next time.